Hey guys and welcome to Nickrit. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So I keep seeing all these really cute baskets all over Pinterest that are twine and cotton combined. And I wanted to do my own take on it. I wanted to make little mini versions of it that nested inside one another because I think nesting bowls are really cute and nesting baskets are even cuter. But I also wanted to do it so that it was actually really inexpensive to do. I keep seeing twine at the Dollar Tree and I have been wanting to play with it and do something with this, but I don't like how it looks when you just wrap it around something, so I decided I was going to crochet it. Now, mind you, twine sucks to crochet. It really does. It is painful if you do too much at once. So basically what I wound up having to do is I had to do these in increments and I had to do, take a couple days off between each one. What you could do is you could wear gloves and that would help with how this texture feels rubbing against your fingers, but I'm, I don't know, I just didn't go for that basically. But for today's project, I have two different versions and I've got a bunch of little slides that I'm gonna pop up here to tell you what all the different sizes are. So I'm probably gonna pop that off closer after I do the what's in every single basket after the supplies list. So I have an extra small version where I made it so, it's so tiny, it's super duper tiny. And then I made a small version a medium version, which this is the size that we're going to be crocheting today for today's video. And the medium goes inside of our large, like so. And then this one's an XL, so this is an extra large. So we have our extra large, large, medium, small, and then extra small. So we have five different sizes. They're all generally the same premise and the same idea. So we're essentially, for this pattern, you start out with just creating a magic ring and then increasing to however wide you want your bowl to be. So for the extra small, I just started with a six single crochet, increased to 12 and then increased to 18. Then you go through the back loop only for a round and then you kind of split your height between your twine and your cotton. So for this one, I did one row, which was the back loop only row in twine and then one row in the cotton. For example, here, I expanded out to 24 and did two rows of the twine, back loop only included in one of those rows, and then two rows in the cotton. Here, we're going to do 30, three and three, 36, four and four, and then for the extra large, we did 42 stitches around on our base, back looped only, and then did five and five. In this way, it all nestles in to the same kind of general premise. They all work inside of each other. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing the middle size so you can get a real good idea of what I'm doing. So uh, if you are not familiar with my uh, increasing methods, I have a stacked versus staggering increase method uh, video right down below. So that will be uh, what makes more sense. I am not going to be going more row by row as I am going to be going uh, kind of just generally as an explanation of what I'm doing. I hope that makes sense. Also timestamps will be all over this so you can get to exactly where you want to be in the video. All right, so for the small ones, I ended up using something different other than the twine that you can purchase over at the Dollar Tree. For these ones, I wanted to have and show what color looks like against the twine, and they don't have color yarn a lot over at the Dollar Tree. Sometimes they have cotton uh, that you can use. They have this Premier, I had to reach for it, there we go. This Premier Just Cotton, which you very easily could use to do the same effect, again, at the Dollar Tree, but I used I Love This Cotton, which is a Hobby Lobby brand. So I used that for these colors if you were wondering what exactly these specific colors are. However, in today's video, we're going to be using this cotton twine that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. Where is my big standing one? There it is. Hold on. So you can get this over in the tools slash automobile section, basically, of the Dollar Tree, at least at every single one of my local ones that are within like a 30 mile radius. They all have this cotton twine. I am also using some, this is a three pack that you can get three of these for a dollar at the Dollar Tree, also in the automobile section. And I only used this much to create all three of these little mini baskets. And I only used this much to create these two baskets. So we're gonna use the rest of this up. And if I need to tie it off, I'll show you how I do that. 
I just use my um, magical ring method where I put two together and it's really easy, but I don't know if we'll get there, whether or not I have enough to make a medium with that. We'll see. I'm probably just gonna end up using this one actually. There we go. And I'm also, so you just need these two to uh, as supplies and you're also going to need a crochet hook. Whatever size you're comfortable with is what you're going to want to use. I like a tight stitch on my work, but I know that not everybody can crochet quite as tightly as I do and may not even want to. So what I'm using is a USG six or four millimeter. If you want to go larger, you absolutely can. And also if you don't like how this tapers, I would definitely recommend not using this cotton twine and to go towards using an actual cotton yarn, either the premiere that you can get at the Dollar Tree sometimes, or even just going to Hobby Lobby and spending uh, a little bit of extra money and using a 40% off coupon and getting one of these for like two dollars you can make so many baskets if you just buy one skein if you're making little mini baskets also just to have a measurement this is a quarter in size reference to the baskets so these are meant to be nesting little mini baskets for like a nightstand you can also take the same general premise and keep increasing if you want a larger basket so same idea you can do that All right, let's go ahead and get started. I know that that was a long-winded part, but I already posted the pattern, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so if you wanna wear a pair of gloves, you absolutely can. However, I'm stubborn and I'm just not going to. And I think it'll be easier to show how this is when I'm not wearing gloves. So we're going to create a slip knot, like so. We're gonna put it on our hook. So here's the deal. What I wind up doing is we are going to make our normal magic ring, just like in our stacked versus staggering video. You're also probably going to want to only whip out one of these at a time because they do shed everywhere. That's why I keep mine generally rolled in the ba their bag when I'm not using them. So we're gonna chain two, and I'm going to keep my tensioning very loose. Even though I am using a nice small hook, I do wanna keep my tensioning loose. Otherwise, I'm going to end up hurting my hands and this will hurt basically. So this is what I wind up doing. I'm gonna go back inside my first chain here and we're going to put six single crochet on the inside of it very loosely. I try to make these slowly as I go. Three, it is a pain in the butt, but I like the end product and I think it's cute. So I wanted to share it, pull on it. Only pull a little bit out of a time because it will tangle up on itself and it will also get things everywhere. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Very gently. So now we have a giant hole and we're gonna do the same thing that we always do where I kind of hold right here lightly and I'm going to pull lightly. If you pull too hard, you will rip it and you don't want to rip it like so. So. Here is what I do a little bit differently than in my stacked versus staggering video. What I do here is I'm going to actually keep my tail as if it is a piece of my stitches. I crochet it inside of my stitches. I act as if it is a piece of my stitch. So here, I'm gonna put my hook in, wiggle it in, keep that to the front of the stitch, wrap, pull through, through go in again we're increasing every single stitch and we're going from six stitches up to 12 wrap and go back inside and pull through and pull through so that's two stitches and it is a pain in the butt to see where your stitches are you just got to kind of keep going at it and count as you go along one two one two and you can see all the stuff that's coming off this twine they do have a little bit of a funky smell but again they're cute and I imagine that will wear off eventually. If you want to take some of the pieces of twine off while you go because you think that it is too thick, you're also able to do that. These are not perfect and you can actually find twiny, uh, some twine that's similar to this but a little bit better and with less 
of a smell to them at Hobby Lobby as well. So if you want to go over there, you totally can find that there. But again, this is $2 for a ton of baskets. Like I, I can't get over how many of these this is making. And I haven't even opened my second one. I'm not going to need one for a really long time. You're going to need more twine than you are going to need this cotton up here. One and two. E. Just trying to make sure that you get your increases where you need to. And I believe I've got maybe two more increases. I need to count my stitches. You're every once in a while going to come across a really thick section. And you can either try to smooth it out with your hands, or you can try to peel off a little piece of whatever is too thick and try to work with it like that. So this one needs another stitch because this is also an increase. Ow, I just downside to working with the hook as I sometimes grab onto the wrong thing, like my fingernail. Owie. And one, and back inside the same stitch, two. You can also get a splinter working with this, so just be careful. Pull on your tail, and that will help bring it together a little bit more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve stitches here. We've worked with our tail, so now that is hidden in inside of those stitches. Now here, we're gonna follow the chart and basically do increasing the way that I would for my stacked versus staggering stitch on my normal increasing amigurumi method, which again, link down below. I'll have posted charts and everything like that already on the video so we're going to now increase from 12 to 18 and then from 18 to 24 and then from 24 to 30 and that is going to be our nice uh, medium size basically so extra small small medium large extra large we're making this gray size so that this one can have its own little mini one basically this is the large nesting set this is the small nesting set again links for this will be down below for a pdf pattern if you're interested in that as well but you can also just take a screenshot of what i've posted on the video as well if you want to do it that way so i'm going to go ahead and go increase this to 36 off camera and then I'll show you how I work through the back loop only to create this nice little defining line on the bottom of the basket. And then I go around. So I'll show you how I do that with the bottom of the basket and how I end up changing it to the cotton on top. Be right back as soon as this is as large as it needs to be. All right. So now that I've reached the size that I want width wise, I did 30 stitches. And we're going to now transfer over to where we're going to make this cute little border along here and the way that we do that is we're going to do something called back loop only so previously we were going through the entire stitch like so both v's are around my hook right now but what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to only go through the back loop the loop furthest away from you like so this leaves the front loop kind of pressed down and not hidden by the stitch, which creates this line over time. So we're going to just lightly single crochet that, go into the next one, you can start seeing the line going through there. This counts also as your first single crochet around, but for this one, we're going to single crochet through the back loop only on this one round. And then for the next two, we're going to go back to how we were doing it before where we go through both loops and then do two more for a total of three single crochets around. Go through the back loop only. It's kind of easier when you start just kind of pushing your finger along there and very gently single crochet around. This, if you make too many at once, it can hurt your fingers. So make sure to take breaks because it is a little rough on the hands like I've been saying. So again, also work on your tensioning. Do not have it so tight that you're hurting your hands actively to try to get it going. Loose fingers. If you need to go up a size hook, then you need to go up a size hook. That's, that's not a big deal. Just try to get it so that it looks the way that you want it. So I'm going to continue all the way around until I have finished with this round leaving all of my little front stitches along the back here. And I'll be right back to show you what I mean for when I start single crocheting around for the non back loop parts. Be right back. All right, so now this is our last stitch before we start seeing our back loop only. So I'm going to finish off there where I go through the back loop only. And now we're gonna do the next two rounds where we go back 
through both of the loops. We have our V going through again. So we're just gonna go around for two more rounds. And then we get to the easy part, which is the cotton. This is the part where I like it a lot. So we're going to just continue single crocheting around. This counts as our first single crochet around, even though we went through the back loop only. That was just to create this line so you can have this definitive point of where the bottom of the basket is, and that counts as the first row. And for the medium size, which is what we're doing right now, you go around three times total, so we need to do two more rounds. I'll be right back as soon as that's done, and I will show you how I transfer over onto my cotton yarn. It doesn't need to be super fancy. I don't have any kind of techniques that make it completely jogless. That doesn't super duper matter to me, so I just kind of let it face whichever way I want. So I'll be right back, and I'll show you how I also hide my tails into my work. Be right back. Okay, so here we are at the point where I don't need to use my tail as a stitch marker anymore. I'm gonna have a pretty good idea of where I am. So because I uh, used my stitch, my original tail, as if it is a part of my original 12 stitches there, I'm going to just cut it. That way it's hidden, you don't have to worry about it, and I'm gonna put that in my trash. So. Here, I have done all but the last stitch of my second, well, technically third time around. I'm going to be changing over to this cotton now, and I'm gonna move this out. I still have that much left after this was done. This is gonna go into my yarn basket. I like to put this so that it's pulling from it from underneath. There we go. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna go in to our very last stitch, pull through once, and now we have our two stitches on our work. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to take and make a nice long cotton tail, hold it as if it is on the back of my work, and wrap and pull that through the final two stitches like so. Here, I like to kind of keep this going over here, very gently double knot my yarn. Well, my twine and my yarn like so very gently otherwise you can tear it so then i'm going to do that again and give it a double knot like so and i am done with my twine i'm going to give that a nice little snip move this over with my other twine and now i am going to again work with these two tails as if they are a piece of my stitches like i did for my original tail earlier so now we're just going to go around three times with that in mind. So I'm going to go inside our first stitch, make sure that this is between my yarn and all of that, working as if these two tails are a piece. And gently, same tensioning as you were doing before, single crochet around. We're going to do that for three rounds as I snag my finger again. That hurt. Ooh. All right. This is a rough, rough little basket to make. They're cute and adorable and they're pretty sturdy. Like this isn't gonna go anywhere, but I would definitely take my time with making these and not just, I'm gonna bounce my camera for good luck, and not just uh, go in willy nilly because you will tax your hands making these. I like to do this under at least like as many stitches as I can because it'll make it look a bit more even. And I like to do it with as long as I honestly can. It looks a little bit better. I tug on it every now and again just to make sure that it looks nice. And I'm just gonna keep going around and around for three rounds. And once I have reached the point where I don't want to make this go underneath my stitches, I just give it a little snip and it's nice and hidden. We're all about two inches into our basket, so that's pretty much all I need for hiding my tail. I'm just gonna kinda keep going just for a little bit longer. I'm going to also be careful because this is not as uh, worsted. I don't know if that's the term I want to use, but it tends to, it's easier for your yarn to go th split through the center of it, and then you don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do one more stitch with this in the center, and then we're going to take these two tails that we've been working in, and we're going to try to get as close as we can and snip like so and get apparently just all kinds of twine dust everywhere if you pull on your 
basket just ever so slightly it'll bring it into your stitches and now I'm going to continue on for this round plus two more rounds after that and I'll show you how I close off I do my seamless fasten off technique but I have a video on that already but I will show you what that looks like for here you can't tell where I fasten off I'll be right back as soon as I go around one two well two and a half more times all right so i just finished off my last single crochet for making three rounds essentially i'm going to create a small tail let this just kind of hang out as you can see uh all of these this trio of the first three ones the big ones for the medium large and extra large were all made with this and this is what I started with, so you have a lot to work with. If you want to make a bunch of these, you don't need to get a bunch. I would focus on getting more of the twine if you wanted to make a bunch of these, and not as many of these, basically. So, what I'm going to do now is my seamless fasten off method. We are going to pull our tail out like so. I have a full blown video on how to do this in my Crochet 101 playlist, but I'm just going to show real quick how I do it. We're going to essentially skip this stitch right here and we're going to go into our next one and we're creating a stitch over that stitch so that it is seamless. The way that I do that is I go from the front through the back, then I'm going to go through my last actual created stitch. This is the loop that we just made by doing that. We're going to go inside through the center of that loop and go towards the back basically. Pull that and that's our second loop so the tighter we pull this, the smaller our loops will be, and you want to try to pull it so that it is pretty much on par with the rest of your stitches. That looks about good. What I'm going to do now is we're gonna flip this inside out. And I'm gonna take this tail and I'm gonna feed it through the backs of some stitches just so that it doesn't come undone for whatever reason. So I like to go through multiple stitches at a time. I like to go through the back Vs of my work, pull that through. I'm gonna do that for a couple more stitches just to make sure that it is not gonna go anywhere. Because that is the worst, is getting your tails all hidden. You think they're perfect, and then all of a sudden, bam, one pops out. Not on my watch. All right, so here's another thing that you can do. This is pretty much done, but I also don't like how fuzzy it can be. So A, I'm gonna cut my tail, let that hide and B say you get like a big piece like this I tend to try to just kind of go around and just trim it just ever so slightly I don't get too close to the base of this but enough that when I go around yeah you're gonna get a bunch kind of piled on wherever you're doing it so just make sure you do that just try to make it a little bit I don't know, smoother nicer looking Generally, I do that with my twiny little basket. That makes it look a bit nicer. If you go too short on it, you might mess with the integrity of your twine. So I'm just gonna do the ones that are generally sticking out a lot and kind of not even touching like I'm not going like this I'm going above it and trimming that way that way it looks better and now that we've done that we're going to a get rid of our pile and B I'm gonna flip this back out and I also tend to do the same thing for the very dramatic hairs on the outside as well so that it can look a little bit again refined look a little bit nicer and it's easier to see it like so if I see any little bumps and that's pretty much it this is the medium size that goes inside the large and I'm gonna get rid of these and that is pretty much it we have a printable PDF for this if you're interested in it which is downloadable from our uh, Ravelry the pattern for that will be free for the first week just like all of my other patterns I tend to make them downloadable for free for the first week and then afterwards they go back up to whatever price they are this uh, lets people who are on my YouTube channel have a chance to actually get the PDFs if they want them and 
Also, I just love how these turned out. They all nest inside of one another. They're super cute. So let me know what you think if you want to see more things like this, like baskets or Dollar Tree stuff that I do, because I actually do a lot of Dollar Tree stuff. Like recently I just did vanity lights from the Dollar Tree. I'm very excited with how that turned out. Let me know if you are interested in it at all. And uh, thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Without your support, we won't be able to grow as fast as we are. We have 43,000 subscribers. That's crazy, bonkers, insane. I cannot get over that. That is just mind-blowing to me. So uh, that again is on patreon.com slash knit. I don't know how I landed that name, but sure. I'll be the one that's named knit. Sure, even though I crochet in 90% of my videos. Um, you can get free patterns over there and we have a couple of, of other rewards on there as well. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. All right, until next time, guys. Bye!